looking, there's a few, a few members of the community that guests are here today that I'd like to say something really short. And I, I see Judge Maldonado in attendance here. Maybe the judge, would you like to share a few words with us? Joaquin Julian Bond was here last year with the NAACP in Monterey. Great civil rights advocate, sacrificed his life. And he also had his case go to the U.S. Supreme Court because the Georgia legislature would not see him. And it went and nine to zero, nine to zero. And I, I got to speak on, on his behalf recognizing. I saw this man, this wonderful attorney before the United States Supreme Court. I've never seen a more eloquent attorney in my life as Joaquin Avila. He won that case. Judges elected by district. Nine to zero, slam dunk. Congratulations. Personal thanks to Sergio and his wonderful wife, Lupe, for being a go getter. You're a real go getter. And uh, if, if you ever need a reference for a raise, <laughs> <laughs> for a greater share of the profits. <laughs> I really wanted to ask the first uh, Latino judge elected in the Monterey County, Jose Angel Velasquez, would like to say a few words for them. Thank you. A todos ustedes gracias uh, por estar aquí. Después entrar un poco de, de gripa. Thank you, Joaquin. Uh, you made me the first Latino judge to be elected. That differentiates me from the other people. And but we're all human beings. Uh, we all have the thought of doing something right for the community. Uh, you were here when we, we were younger. <laughs> now, we're wilder and now we're older and maybe more mature. Or just uh, <laughs> este más calmados. But I was, there's a lot of good work that's being done by a lot of la younger Latino, Latina uh, folks throughout the district, throughout the county, throughout the state. And thanks to you, Civil Rights Gladiator. Gracias. Ahí está aquí. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Let's see. Um, also, um, here today, uh, one of the plaintiffs and uh, a rebel rouser in his own right, David Sedano. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah. For us? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say to Joaquin that he was always such an inspiration to us because, you know, in those days we were, we'd get all emotional, you know, like, yeah, Joaquin was real calm out, you know, just, mind, just went to work. And uh, he inspired all of us. Uh, that we're already doing a lot of work in the community with Jesse and uh, Jose, Simon, and a lot of other people. And it was because of his great work that I was the first Latino to be elected to the Hartnell Community College District from East Salinas. Uh, we had a lot of firsts, you know, Simon Salinas, and Fernando Armenta, and Roberto. Forget some of the names, but yeah, you can tell my age now. And like Jose was saying, we were young and, and uh, Back then we were skinnier and we had a black hair <laughs> and uh, better looking. But I just want to thank uh, Joaquin Avila because he's just a tremendous, tremendous inspiration, and you know he opened the roads for a lot of gen that generation of people, which is me, and then the next generation of people that are coming up uh, for them to run, and you know there's. Luis Alejo, who is a very good example of the kind of people that we need in office that are not afraid to stand up for for voting rights and for people. And so, Luis, thank you for all the work that you do. Great yeah. work. Yeah. Our good friend, 
from Sacramento came to visit us today. John Ariaga, would you like to say a few words really quick? Let's, let them know who you are. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Ariaga, and uh, I have a business out of uh, Sacramento uh, Governmental Relations, uh, but I do a lot of work with uh, various organizations, uh, and one of them is the League of California Cities Latino Caucus, and uh, another is the Supervisors uh, Latino Caucus, and, and a few others. And they're all basically elected officials uh, up and down the state, and it gives me a lot of joy to see these people from, from the young to the old just making their way through uh, through office and so forth and, and, and making life better for all of us. And um, Joaquin, it wouldn't have been possible without you. We should really pave the way. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. In San Benito County, she's a legend in our right. Mickey, would you like to share a few words with us? A few words, Mickey? A few words? Well, Joaquin and I go way back. Um, and I remember when you were working with us in Hollister, and I kept saying to Joaquin, don't sue the city. I worked it. <laughs> so um, he said, you know, Mother didn't have the time and the money to do a research on the city. So I, being that I worked there, I never took breaks. But then I started taking breaks, and I went into the city clerk's office, and I used to spend about 20 minutes in there every day researching, uh, you know, the city's history. And I can remember I brought up a document that I think the city wanted to buy it from us, you know, because we put a document together of the historical um, city where, you know, Latinos were not elected. It just so happened that my brother, Henry Salorio, was the first elected Latino, you know. And, and I thought that was great. And we were very, very proud of Joaquin and all the work he did for us. Um, it made me laugh when you mentioned Dan Dodge and you mentioned me because both troublemakers that work with you on, on different issues with other cities and then we got elected. <laughs> so anyway, we're doing our best and Joaquin, uh, what can I say? I mean, we know you from so many years. You've worked with LULAC throughout the nation. I know we paid tribute to you at several occasions and your son was there in D.C. to receive it for you. But you know what? I was looking at what the LULAC magazines, the LULAC News, and I think it goes way back when you were, actually you became the president of Maldives. So I made a copy, I pulled it out for you. And anyway, there's a little token appreciation from also from San Benito County, LULAC. Okay, thank you so much. We did work on, on Paro Valley Unified. We still probably could do a lot more. Lupe Rivas, would you like to share a word or two with us real quick? Right, Dr. Lupe Rivas. Thank you, Joaquin. I'm, I'm honored to be asked to come up here. I really have heard of all your great work, and I admire you for what you've done. I'm, I stand here before you as an elected official for the Pajaro Valley Unified School District, the first Latina woman to be elected on the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. And any of you know the district, we're almost 81% Hispanic now. And it's kind of a shame that it hasn't happened before. But I ran three years ago, and because of the people in Watsonville, because of people like uh, Daniel Dodge, Luis Alejo, and all the people that have been fighting so hard to get the uh, equal rights for the Hispanic population, I came forward. I'm a newcomer to Watsonville. I only came in about 16 years ago. But I thought this is a great place because these people are really dedicated to what they believe in and they're really dedicated to getting the, the rights for the Hispanic population. So I jumped in. I jumped in, como los demás. <laughs> Sometimes not too sure what we were doing, but we jumped in and I have been proud to represent the Hispanic population in Watsonville. And I'm here to tell you that there's a lot more work has to be done. 
some of us have stepped forward, but there's a lot more that have to step forward still. There's a lot of work that has to be done. It's not only just a matter of being a member of the Hispanic population and representing the Hispanic population, but it's a matter of speaking up for the gente, the matter of saying, hey, wait a minute, you can't do this. You need to do this, something different. Hey, you can't uh, elect these people. You can't uh, hire these people. We need to hire these other people. We need to have representation on, on this board. So it's, it's, it's a fight, and, and I'm telling all of you, if you're young, you're old, wh whatever age you are, get involved in whatever level you want to get involved in. Be a voter, that's the basic thing. Get, a vote, get people to vote for you, for the, for the population that you want to represent. Get people involved in some way or another, because we've come a long way, but we still have a long ways to go. So I thank you, and I'm gonna give you a hug, even though. <laughs> thank you. Thank you from the Watsonville City Council, Rebecca Garcia. Would you like to share a few words with us? when Joaquin came to Watsonville to uh, kind of hang out with him. And remember earlier he said that he had these ideas? Well, we used to be at the mansion house, if you remember, uh, and he would give all these ideas, and I, as just a, a regular lay community member, I thought, <laughs> but it, it, it was his... Um, thinking, uh, and this is cliche, but thinking out of the box, that um, maybe we, we lost the first time we went to court, but an appeal, he won it, he won it. And it went all the way to the Supreme Court. And at the Supreme Court, they wouldn't touch it. They didn't want to have to deal with Joaquin Avila. <laughs> and, and, and as a result of uh, that work, uh, just like uh, David mentioned, uh, I was the first Latina elected to the Cabrillo College uh, Governing Board because when Watsonville uh, lost its, uh, I mean, won its case, uh, Joaquin and many of the community members went to Pajar Valley School District, went to Cabrillo College, went to the supervisors, and we said to them, change to single member district elections or we're going to sue you. They didn't want to be sued. And so they knew that they would lose if they had to uh, match with Joaquin. So in Watsonville, we owe so much to you, Joaquin. And he didn't know that I was city council. Who would have thought when we were having a glass of wine fighting for this lawsuit that I would end up in city council? But started with uh, Cabrillo College. And what's interesting, that was in 1992. That was a very long time ago. And in 1992, it was just three years before when we won the, the lawsuit in 1989 when the Supreme Court didn't hear it. Uh, the power, in, in, those that were in power, of course, were all white. And so they knew that um, the Latinos were going to start now getting involved, <coughs> getting elected, uh, making, uh, trying to make decisions. And so they were always looking for safe Latina and Latino. So when I ran for Cabrillo College in 1992, they looked for that same Latina and Latino. And no, they couldn't find one. They couldn't find one. They would run against me. So I won, and I have uh, Joaquin to thank for it. And we just owe so much to him. And we appreciate that all of you are recognizing uh, the leadership that he brought to not only here locally, but throughout the United States. And we all, all need to be so proud of you. And we are proud of you. Former trustee from the Santa Rita School District, Superintendent yeah. John Ramirez, would you like to share a few words with us? I hear you're not shy. I was actually seeing a city. Okay. <clears throat> the first work you did when I was writing coattails of people like Judge Velasquez and Simone and all of them, I guess they had too many seats and I had enough people. So I was an undergrad at Santa Clara. 
and actually walked into a seat on half the campaign, so I appreciate that. I needed benefits at that time, so thank you. But I think there's another impact, and I, that's where guys like me fall in. Now that the boards are changing, and now that the impact on elected officials and, and the, the um, influx of Latino board members, people like me get opportunities to become superintendents. So the trickle effect, I think, is the bigger impact and the policy that they're able to do, but with hiring of Latinos into positions, that's really opened up a lot of doors. So you know, it's an honor for me to see you. When I was a kid, I used to try to look at you when we were all trying to figure out all this stuff going on. So really appreciate it. We got to read about all your stuff in college. We got to write about it. We got to memorialize what happened in Salinas and in Watsonville as undergrads and graduates. So thank you very much for all that. Appreciate it. State LULAC, actually, I might add. And just, um, you know, I'm bringing up all the rebel authors while we can. Oh, they're all in one room. Oh, hugs. Let me just say that many times we don't even realize who has touched our lives. I was in my second year in media in San Francisco. And there was this wonderful project to reach out into the Latino community by MOLDEF. It was the first year that we had that conversation, that interaction with the local officials. And there were many from the community that just we're trying to get in. I was lucky to be in that first group of the Maldef leadership seminars. So I indirectly already knew Joaquin. That's how you've touched the lives, Joaquin. In many different ways. No, I'm not a politician. I'm not elected. <laughs> but, um, we're all politicians. <laughs> I'm not an elected official. I was a little media guy that, um, through the inspiration that we received, through the vision you had for Maldef and the Latino community, through that program, I showed up in Monterey County. And little did I realize that what was supposed to be just a few years became now two decades. <laughs> On behalf of the California League, of United Latin American citizens, the oldest and first civil rights group in America and here in California with our current, um, with our past state director, Nikki Luna, our current president, Dave Rodriguez, who couldn't be here this evening, I as his deputy state director for California LULAC, we just say thank you, Joaquin. We have, in several occasions, given you awards, plaques, but it continues, Joaquin. So whether it's this occasion or more occasions to come, you're in our hearts for the work that you've done. Once again, congratulations for wonderful years of, of service to the community, because that's what it was, but now a vision of planting the seed on those young people out there that are going to benefit from that spirit, that ganas that you've exemplified and that you will always be remembered for. So God bless you. Dios te bendiga. Monterey County Superintendent of Schools. Bill Barr, would you like to share a few words with us? Yeah. Okay, thank you for all you've done. I'll make this short. I, I'm retired now, but uh, just to give you an idea of the inspiration that everybody's talking about, and David, that you and I fought a lot of wars, but I uh, decided to run for county superintendent of schools in 1989, and I had just watched the Watsonville and Salinas City Council and the judicial war take place. 
And it, it was such an inspiration to me that as I finished up my doctoral studies, I decided uh, I had to write a dissertation and I wanted it to be on something meaningful. So I wrote my doctoral dissertation on, the title of it is Achieving Equitable Representation Through the Use of the Voting Rights Act. And because of that and the rest of our work with a lot of good people in this room, we now have changed uh, from at-large elections to trustee area elections at Hartnell College, Monterey Peninsula College, Salinas Union High School District, Salinas City, uh, City School District, Monterey County Board of Education, Alice Al Union School District, and Chular School District. Just to, to give you a name, and I've since retired, consulted with a few others. Becky, we've worked together on the Santa Cruz County Board of Education and the realignment of the trustee areas. So your work continues on and on, and you achieved so much through the inspiration that you gave us all, and I want to include myself in that thanks. So many thanks, which is Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all these elected officials, Joaquin. All these elected <laughs> officials. Joaquin, I met you at Naleo uh, a couple of years ago, and <laughs> probably we have corresponded through Facebook and whatnot. I'm the youngest board member for the San Diego High School District, and I have been for the last 12 years. And I'd like to thank you for the work that you did, which made it possible. Um, for me to be able to serve. I am running for re-election again. I just got a phone call walked out of here because somebody asked for my Form 700s and I thought, let them have them, I told the superintendent. I'm running in a Latino district. <laughs> Thank you. Right? And so um, I'm also the youngest member of the California School Boards Association. I'm the director at large Hispanics, represent uh, Latinos in the entire state with the school board association. I wouldn't be able to do that work if I wasn't on the board and the work that you did. And I serve with the California Latino School Boards Association. And one of the things that we're tackling that Luis um, has helped uh, us with is that we want to increase, we want to decrease the teacher shortage that's occurring. And we want to address it. 17% of teachers in California are Latino today. And our demographic is much higher of our students. And we need to decrease those gatekeepers. And um, we had addressed the reason he's, you know, he had with the Latino School Board Association, and we're really proud of that. And so all of the work that you've done to put people like us, well, to help us achieve these positions is going to be um, trickling down for many, many years. Thank you. From the city of Watsonville, I tried to hold on before I introduced him. Um, this young man's mother was on strike with me many, many years ago. And a lot of the, what we got us moving in Watsonville to go to district elections was the cannery strike that happened for a couple of years. We saw that we had no representation, no voice, no access to government. So it's, I'm really proud of Felipe Hernandez, whose mother was on that picket line who is now the vice mayor of the city of Watsonville, will be the mayor of Watsonville next year. So Felipe can, from one of the, from District 1, one of the super Latino districts that we created back then. Felipe. You know, first of all, I want to say, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I think that the public service that I'm serving is, I owe it all to you and all the, all the effort and all the plaintiffs and all the legal clerks, everyone be, be before me that was doing all this work. At the time, I was, I think, probably like 15 or 16 when it was going on, so I was really young. And, you know, after I came back to uh, Watsonville, uh, right away, me and Luis were machistas back then in college, and. <laughs> We ran into Daniel Dodge and we used to have discussions and have coffee with him quite often and he would bring up your name and the stories that always inspired us even you know while we were going through college and always talked about in the future running for city council positions and different positions later on. And I've met several folks from also from Salinas Machistas here too that you know also inspired us and they had the same stories. You inspired people throughout this whole region. You know, and it's, uh, you know, 
One of the things that I always say is that we also, as electeds, we also have a responsibility. And that responsibility is for us to help new people, new electeds, to create a pipeline of new people that we put on our commissions, that we put on our boards, and we give people that opportunity so it doesn't end. We have to continue growing, and that's the way we, that we have to do it. We have to put people that are going to be have that fighting spirit. And, um, you know, that's part of our responsibility now as electeds. Um, I remember one of the stories that always stuck out in my mind that Dan used to tell us, and that's that back in the day when the, when the uh, districts, when they had the, the seven council members in the city of Watsonville, seven of, the council seven of the council members lived within a three block radius. Six, six of them lived within a three block radius. And four of them lived literally neighbors. They're all neighbors. So, I mean, talk about the concentration of power in one district. Talk about the racism behind that. So I really want to thank you, you know, for all the work that you've done. Again, you know, I've read a lot of articles that are happening about voting rights right now, and I've seen that a lot of communities, of people of color in different communities are using this as a tool. Like where you're from, for example. Uh, cities like in the South Bay of San Jose area, there's Asian communities that are now, now looking at, you know, district elections as well. So it's not only serve, you know, Latino Chicano communities, it's serving everyone, all peoples of color here in the community. So I want to thank you for that as well. Thank you. Thank you. A couple more speakers, we're almost done. I just want to make sure that we give everybody up. I, I, I know we could all speak all night long, but we want to keep things moving along. Cause, but, uh, from the, Dr. Pedro Castillo has been very active for many, many, many years working, you know, doing the work for us. Yeah, yeah. Let's let him talk for a few minutes. I'm sure if you're asking him to talk. Pedro, would you like to share a few words with us? Thank you very much. Joaquin is going to be remembered historically. I know that a number of people are, are working on the history of the, the Watsonville case, and some people, historians, are working on the Salinas case. And there's a book that's going to be coming out soon this year on Salinas, and one thing that it touches is the voting rights issue here. Uh, I met Joaquin because it was really my wife, and it was the, quote, old Ulek that was very much involved in the, uh, with Joaquin and the voting rights issue in, uh, in, uh, in Watsonville. Uh, Rebecca Garcia was one of the LULAC presidents at that time. Uh, Celia Organista, who could not be here, was another of the uh, presidents. And my wife, Shirley Castillo, was also a president. So, uh, the women took over LULAC and it continued and they worked very hard on, on this issue and it brought district elections. And uh, so then we have Rebecca now in the city council. We had. Uh, uh, Daniela on the city council, Luis was on the city council, Karina Cervantes, our uh, new assembly person in 2016, is on the city council and mayor. A little plug for Karina, um, who could not be here because she's talking about this in Monterey at the same time. Um, so historians are going to look at not just the cases in Salinas and in and, and Watsonville as key cases to empower this community, the Latino community, that has happened. And as Joaquin pointed out, uh, it will continue to, to happen, and we'll see it in 2020 and 2030 and 2040. Uh, but Joaquin was very instrumental in this. Uh, one thing that I wanted to say that shows the humanity in Joaquin is that one of the ways that he paid for this, he mentioned this earlier, that a lot of people uh, owe him some money, and I've got a paper here with an IRA, <laughs> but we'll talk later about that. What Joaquin would do is that he would call people and say, look, I need $5,000, can you give me this? And as soon as we win the case, because he knew and we knew that he was going to win the case, uh, then he would pay you back. And I think I'd lend you some money, and I did get the money back, so <laughs> Joaquin was very good. <laughs> Uh, about this. 
And as Rebecca would pointed out earlier, all we had to do in Watsonville, when we went to the Pajaro Valley Unified School District or Cabrillo College or the Board of Supervisors, is tell them, Watsonville City Council paid over $1 million to Mr. Joaquin Avila. Do you want to pay that? And that was the, the end of the issue. They went to, uh, away from at-large elections to district elections. So you were known in many jurisdictions, Joaquin. And you're legendary and people still know you. Um, some refer to you in other names besides Joaquin, <laughs> but that's, that's okay. You were the troublemaker. So all of us want to thank you, and history is going to look at this, and historians who are writing about these cases and what happens, the importance of Joaquin Avila uh, in uh, empowering the Latino community. So on behalf of many of us uh, from throughout this region and the state and the Southwest, uh, we want to thank you for your work and your continued work, and it was good to see you. Thank you. I just want to, I, I, like I said, I'm overwhelmed by all of this, these generous and very positive comments. I do think we still have a long way to go. Uh, I want to set my sights or our sights, at least to convince maybe other attorneys, but, you know, Chicanos are starting to fly planes. And the uh, Monterey Peninsula Airport District is at large and so we need to start getting some people uh, on that airport district so that we can go after other districts like the water irrigation districts and uh, other utility districts uh, so it's not over by a long shot I was one of the persons, the instigator of the Watsonville, the Watsonville case. Myself and my significant other by the name of Jose Lopez, we used to work at Legal Aid. And we, were pretty, we, had, we had worked on two campaigns to, to elect Latinos onto the city council in Watsonville. We worked day and night, and we got other people to do so. And we walked every street, we knocked on every house, we spoke with every voter, and yet when it came down to voting, we lost the elections. So then we put a committee together to talk about how are we going to do this? What is it that we need to do? Dan Dodge was one of them. Well, I said, let's sue the fuck out of them. <laughs> and they said, you're crazy, Maria, you are effing crazy. You know? And as it turned out, because I was working with legal aid, I was not allowed to be a plaintiff. So Cruz Gomez became our plaintiff. And we had talked to other attorneys. We had asked, and we couldn't find, we had Todd McFerrin, Bob Tarrin, Bob, Bob Tarrin, right? Right. And they kept saying, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. You're crazy. You're insane. You know. Well, Jose and I had, we had had this long discussion about elections and how people were being voted. And I had come from Soledad. Soledad was a, one of the first cities in the valley that actually elected a um, Latino council back in the 70s, in the early 70s. And we knew what it, and not, so I knew what that took. You know, but it wasn't the same. In Watsonville, Santa Cruz County, it was not the same. And so anyway, as it turned out, Jose said to me, I know somebody who will do it. I said, why do you have to bring somebody else in? <laughs> he says, no, I know somebody. Let me talk to somebody. I know. I know. Let me talk to him. Let, 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 me, give it, let me see if he will. And then we met on Beach Street 
where we actually signed, where we actually signed the complaint. And at that time, Cruz Gomez became your, your plaintiff against the city. And so, I am like so happy, but it is not over with. I, I was appointed to the planning commission by Oscar Rios, who became the first elected official, Latino official, to, to the Watsonville City Council. Cruz Gomez was running, but there was such a, a you know, <coughs> there was so much disagreement between the Latinos at that time that instead of focusing on her campaign, she focused against Oscar Rios, who she wasn't running against, so she lost her own campaign. But anyway, as it turned out, I was appointed to the Planning Commission. I currently sit on the Greenville Planning Commission, and one of the things that I have realized, come to the realization, is that the Planning Commission essentially is responsible for creating a vision of your community. But it is not just the sole purpose of the, of the Planning Commission. There are also other districts, the Recreation District, the School Board, the Hospital Districts, and the Fire Districts, that also need to know that they need to participate in the development of that vision for your community. That's what I'm struggling with right now. I don't see a vision. What do we want our community to look like? And I've been hammering against this for the last six months. That we need to have a vision. We need to have a clear vision of what we want our community to look like. What kind of recreation services do we want for our children? What kind of educational services do we want for our children? What kind of housing do we want? And I want to throw one more thing in for you because I really feel strongly about it. Is you know, we have a major agriculture uh, industry in our, in, in, our, in, in, our, in, our, in our county. And they need the farm workers. They need the people that come across the border to harvest the crops. There is no way that they are not going to do it without, that they are going to do it without them. So if they need them so much, why isn't a, they're part of the part of the plan for the county and the cities to include housing for those people that do come across to work. The fields. It's not included part because people think, oh, they're illegal, they don't belong here. Sorry, but if you look back at the Rosero program and how they define labor, there is the labor that comes from Mexico, which is required to provide to provide workers in for agriculture. It's under, it, it, anyway, so we need the labor. There's no way in heck industry is going to survive without this labor. So we also need to create a vision for those people that come to work here and make sure that housing, health care, and all the other essentials are provided for. So, anyway, thank you very much. When Don and I were working together back in, Green, in Watsonville, we had, in the, well, in the 80s, we had this major discussion, and we were trying to run people for the city council, right? Dodge was one of the people I kept telling, no, Dodge, you just wait on, you just hang on, this is the way we're going to go, because we were trying to get somebody elected, right? And so, Thank God that you came along and took the case and ran with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. We want you to take a, thank you for coming. We want you to take a moment to talk with Joaquin, socialize, enjoy the moment. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, we're happy. Take one big group community picture. One big group community picture up front. Thank you. Can we all come in and take a big community picture? Because they want to document the occasion of Martin Joaquin. Sorry. I got to go. We need to bring more to the front.
Una, dos y tres. Otra, una, dos y This one right here. One, two, and three. Right. Yeah. Uh, one, one more. two, oh, <laughs> Alright. One, two, and Un aplauso, everybody. We have a petition going around for anybody willing and wanting to help save the old Monterey County Jail. Feel free to sign it. It's going around now as we speak. The old Monterey County Jail. Mr. Kurt has a powerful sign. I know which one. 